Hi, my name is Jan Bla. I am the project lead of JS Report and this video is an introduction to the .NET JS Report SDK. Never seen JS Report? JS Report is open source and JavaScript based reporting platform. It is great for printing PDF as well as Excel. If you are interested in its full power, you should check the introduction video on the JS Report website. This video is not about JS Report itself. It will also not show you how to design fancy reports. It is about the JS report and .NET integration. Let's start with demo and show how you can run JS report right from the .NET. I have here Visual Studio 2017 with the latest update and I am about to create .NET Core console application. The SDK supports of course both .NET Core as well as the full .NET framework runtime. The first thing I do is change the c language version in the project setting so I can use the async main method. It looks much cooler afterwards and it's not yet supported in my default c language. The next step is installing JS Report NuGet packages. I use two of them, JS Report Binary, which embeds in its assembly manifest the JS Report exe utility, and JS Report Local, which provides c -sharp API around it. These two packages are separated because this allows you to choose specific JS Report utility version or distribution for a specific platform and still use the same API on the top of it. Now I can write a code to get the instance of the JS Report service. I use Fluent Syntax and Builder provided it from the JS Report local package. Mainly I need to specify to Builder which binary I want to use. I can now start rendering. I use for this render async method, which reflects the structure of the JS Report API. I pass the render request instance, which needs to contain the template specification. The first required template property is called recipe. This instructs JS Report how it should convert the template content into the desired output. In this case, I will use the Phantom PDF recipe, which converts HTML into PDF using Phantom JS. The second required parameter is templating engine. I explain this later, and for now set to the none engine, which skips the templating engine evaluation. The last required property is called content. In this case, I can set any kind of HTML, including styles or JavaScript. So let's set there a hello world heading with color style. The output of the rendering includes various metadata like number of pages or content type. However, the most important is the document stream. I copy this stream to a file so I can later open it and check the result. Running the project should generate the output file for me, which contains the PDF with hello world text. Let's wait for it to finish and open the stored PDF. This is quite basic HTML to PDF conversion, but JS Report provides tons of additional features and the main one is JavaScript templating engine evaluation. I can for example specify that I want to use handlebars engine, pass some data into the template and if I run the project, I should see that the values get correctly replaced. The JavaScript based templating engines are the most common approach for dynamic report assembling in JS Report world. However, in the ASP.NET world, you probably want to use Razor MVC views instead. To demonstrate how this can be done, let's create a new project based on ASP.NET Core. I install again JS Report binary and JS Report local NuGet packages. But this time, I will install also JS Report ASP.NET Core package. This provides me additional ASP.NET middleware and filter, which helps with integrating JS Report into ASP.NET Core application. The first step after the NuGets are installed is to find startup CS file and configure services method. There I use extension method add JS Report to register JS Report middleware. This method requires JS Report rendering interface, which can be a remote JS Report or the local JS report initialized the same way as in the console application demo. The next step is to choose a control action and mark it to be processed by JS report using middleware filter attribute. The control action then also need to specify which recipe should be used to process the view output. This is done using extension method on the HTTP context and I use a recipe called Phantom PDF again to convert the controller action output into the PDF using Phantom JS. Now I can run the application and verify that the view output is really converted into the PDF. This is just simple HTML to PDF conversion. 
But keep in mind that JS report is very powerful with tons of features which you can find in the documentation or just by expanding the IntelliSense. I can for example instruct JS report to take the rendering logs and print it to the output which can dramatically simplify the troubleshooting of the templates designing. Those already familiar with JS report are probably curious if they can also use JS report studio and its full capabilities for designing and storing report templates. This is quite advanced scenario, but yes, you can also use the same nuggets to achieve this. I demonstrated it on another demo. Let's create another console.net core application. There I install again JS report binary and JS report local nuget packages. This is all you need for running JS report right from the .NET application. Then I use the same code in the main method to initialize JS report. However, this time I mark the instance to run as web server and redirect the JS report output to the console application. I also need to call start, a start async method and wait for a key before exiting the application and killing the JS report server. If I run the application, the JS report starts up as well, and I can open my browser and navigate to the default port 5488. There is my JS report studio running, and I can use it to fiddle with templates and preview reports. You probably want to store the templates right in the project directory, and for this, you need to do a couple of configurations. You need to specify that you want to run JS report right from the current directory instead of bin folder. You probably want to call kill running JS report processes function to always clean up the orphans of JS report studio, which could be blocking the default port. You also need to configure JS report to use file system store. And I also call create sample. So I have some, some something to play with. I run the application again. And I can see there are common sample templates ready. You can see that the default PDF based invoice sample just works, as well as more complex sample for rendering Excel. I now close the application and check that my templates are stored in the project. I see everything is there. However, I need to propagate these also to the bin folder so it's published along with my application. I take one file and change the build action to copy to output. This would be tedious to do for all files, so I'll rather edit the underlying project file and use wildcard to select all JS report files. I can now compile the project and check that the bin folder really includes all files. That last step is to use the store templates and invoke the templates rendering using C Sharp. To demonstrate this, I reference the studio project in my original console application. Then I configured the utility based JS report instance to use file system store. Afterwards, JS reports should be aware of store templates in Studio project, and I can use render by name async method to render the invoice template with some dynamic data. Now I run the console the last time and verify that the invoice PDF is being stored. You should now understand how you can host JS report right in the .NET projects. However, common scenario is to host JS report remotely. For example, in JS report online, which is a software as a service JS report hosting. In such case, you only need to invoke rendering remotely. This use case is demonstrated in the next demo. Let's create another console application. And in this case, install JS report client NuGet package. In the main method, I create instance of remote reporting service. The required constructor parameter is URL to the remote JS report. I use JS report online in this demo, so let's open my account. Check that the RIP template works and copy paste my account URL. Fill also the credentials. And I can call already introduced render by name async. Specify the template name and fill also the input data.
Start the output to the file. Random application. Wait for it to finish. Open the output file and you can see that the PDF got nicely rendered in the remote JS report online. Thank you for watching this video. You can find more information on JS report website and specifically in the learn section about the .NET SDK. Please note that the whole JS report .NET SDK is open sourced and hosted on GitHub. I would be thankful for every contribution. Thank you again and see you at the next video.